All right, so it's the 25th of March today, and it'll be the UK release finally of this, which will be Avatar: uh, The Way of Water Collector's Edition. Which, um, yeah, took a while to release. I'm hoping this one isn't damaged or has a kink in the spine like uh, the first one. It doesn't look like it. Thankfully, the outer box actually is not bad. Actually, the outer boxes, but yeah, from first impression, it looks all right. So yeah, uh, this obviously has new material on that, which this one's more justified existing than the other one is, because uh, for the other Avatar film, why they did a separate 4K Blu-ray release, and then literally a year later do another one uh, that you know had all of basically the missing stuff from the original from the first release on there you know I mean this one you can at least understand this one has you know sc stuff that didn't exist previously on there like um, the being thing with this I think disc one yeah no ex uh, no extended cut or anything like that on here um, so yeah, which means I can avoid ripping disc one, to be honest, because um, make MKV strips off the Dolby Vision anyway. There we go, we get, get a nice card there, which thankfully isn't uh, glued to the thing, and it is actually made of card. So yeah, the new stuff on here is uh, new characters of Pandora and that, and I think everything basically on... Uh, disc 4 so yeah but looking at it now yeah, it's slightly nipped together a bit it's the artwork and that on the back it does feel collectory if that's the right word for it so yeah this is a little bit I can wind it out a little bit more there so this one seems to be all right I don't know we'll open it up and see if there's a no it looks all right this one so yeah this one seems to have arrived okay compared to the previous Ooh, here we go yeah I'm not I don't think anyone's really a big... Oh, I can see where the discs have been there, where the corner there is bloody sliding out. But yeah, I don't think anyone's a big fan of these cardboard disc holders because, one, they're not very good at holding the discs in because as I opened it, all the discs were sliding out. But number two <clears throat> is that, uh, one, they're very fragile, but three is that... Um, they're much more likely to scratch and damage the discs over time, and they don't because they don't hold them in place. They can slide around in the box. So yeah, there's disc one, which the only difference between this one and the previous release in terms of the first disc is that on this one uh, you're getting Dolby Vision. Hooray! So yeah, <clears throat> so now there's no excuse for all future Disney 4K releases to have Dolby Vision on there since they've paid the license for it because their uh, James Cameron insisted that it have Dolby Vision so yeah although seeing that Disney seem to particu particularly in the UK and everywhere else seem to basically be stopping 4K releases across the board for a lot of their films Disc 2, which is again the same thing, just the Blu-ray. Which, yeah, is is a shame, particularly um like even on their, you know, big fil bigger films like their Pixar films and that uh in the UK and most of the world only got a Blu-ray release and a DVD release. Universal's doing uh, much the same. So disc three there is the bonus scuff, which I believe again this is the the bonus scuff on here. I believe this disc is exactly the same 
as uh, the previous release in terms of bonus content because it doesn't mention anything new on that disc but the fourth and final disc that is where the new scuff is, I just noticed there's a bit of something there what's that? So this is the fourth and final disc, which has the new bonus content on there. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised. Um, there we go. So, yeah, I guess the other file is worth it in that as well. But uh, basically, if you don't own either films and are considering it, then obviously the collector's editions are generally the ones to go for. And that's because, you know... Even if you're just going for the Blu-ray, you know, this has more, way more content than the Blu-ray release. In fact, uh, I think the standard Blu-ray release is very bare bones, if I remember rightly. Can't remember, actually, off the top of my head. I think the DVD of this actually doesn't have any special features whatsoever, I don't think so. Can't quite... I, to be honest, I, I don't really know. Can't remember. But uh, yeah, there, there we go, there's the two Avatar films and that. And you know, while these both of these films are flawed, and that, both of them are, and that's like, um, you know, once every blue moon when I put, when I put them on, for example, um, it had been years since I'd seen the first Avatar, uh, which I watched uh, just before seeing this one in an IMAX. When I watched it, you know, it it still looks incredible to this day. And um, at some point, you know, when I decide to go back to it, when in, you know, 10 years time or however long it is before the next film, you know, I'll probably go back and watch these and um, on a full, fo on a 4K OLED TV with uh, Dolby Vision, you know, I mean, the Blu-ray of the first film from 2010, 2000, 2010 version, uh, that one looked amazing. The 4K discs and that with Dolby Vision and that, the remasters should look amazing and that as well. Um, yeah, James Cameron can be a bit, bit of a hmm, mixed bag when it comes to the 4K releases particularly. Uh, these ones sh should be alright because they're the newer ones, so I doubt they'll be I doubt there'll be very much difference between them. Um, I'll be interested to know the frame rate because uh, some people have said, if someone could clarify this, because uh, some people have said that these are meant to be ru the 60 frames per second uh, versions, which is interesting. Um, because uh, in the cinema itself, if you went to a particular cinema, the f refresh rate was actually variable between, I think it went between 20, some scenes were 24 and some frames were 60. Some bits were 60, depending on the scene. Uh, but apparently for these 4K releases, uh, they're meant to be running at 60 frames a second. That's something I've heard. I can't confirm it or not. Um, mainly because, essentially, uh, when I rip them, Mirkem KV doesn't seem to support uh, 60 frames per second in that. Uh, when it comes to 4K Blu-rays, it just seems to be at 24, so... If someone could let me know, because um, obviously when I put it in, a, in my 4K Blu-ray player, it will play it at that 60 frames a second. And if it is, it would explain why, because these take forever to convert uh, in handbrake to, uh, you know, something more manageable. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, th there we go. There we go, people. And... Um, if it is the case that they are actually at 60 frames per second, then um, people like me at KMKV, please update it so you know it supports uh, 60 frames a second, and that so you know the rip, the 4K rips I do of them will be at that. But I will say though, if they are though, I hope it is consistent, uh, consistently 60 frames a second throughout because it can be very jarring going between. Like 24, then suddenly 60, then back, you know, constantly going back and forth, which, yeah, is a bit odd. But there we go, people, there we go.